Hi, my name is Jason Forhan. I'm the founder of HR for You Incorporated. We are 501c3 working to eliminate the barriers that prevent people from finding living wage employment. So how great is it that today we're talking about culture in our Time to Change podcast? And Niagara Cares, our brand new sponsor, has this great video for you. Go for it. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a senior maintenance technician in the aseptic area. I've been with Niagara for a little over nine months. Hi, I'm Dave, batching supervisor, and I've been with Niagara for about a year and a half. How have you witnessed innovation in your role? Innovation is kind of like just a daily occurrence at this point. When plan A doesn't work, we move to plan B. We move to plan B. <laughs> and when there is no plan B, we just come up with it on the spot. How do your team members and leadership empower you to innovate and to push the envelope forward? I don't ever look at it as an envelope. Like an envelope suggests that there are boundaries. And there are really no boundaries. Again, you're only looking at possibilities. It's really one of the truly unique aspects of Niagara. We are thrilled to be partnering, to be, have a sponsor like Niagara Bottling Company and Niagara Cares. That makes the difference in us being able to do the things that we need to do to break down barriers. Thank you, Niagara. Thank you, Niagara Cares. Thank you, Ann Canella. All right. Hello and welcome to Time to Change. My name is Jason Forehand. I'm the founder of HR for You Incorporated, and we're on a mission to remove the roadblocks that prevent people from finding living wage employment. Today, I have two incredible people, two incredible human beings with me today to take care of a, an issue that needs to be talked about more. Desiree Goldie is in the house and Brian Poindexter is in the house. Both of these human beings are partners with us at hr for You Incorporated. They are both HR representatives that in their own way are breaking down barriers. They also are both DEI professionals that understand the value of putting people first. So today we are going to tackle what is culture? What is it? So Desiree, I'm going to put it right at your feet. We're going to just jump right on in. What is your definition of culture and why is it important? Yeah, let's start with what it's not. It's not a <laughs> pizza party and a foosball table. I'll tell you that. I no ping pong. No so uh, the worst, right? But I think we always talk about culture all the time. We're like, you want you to go to a place that has a great culture, but you know, what does that really mean, right? Um, and I think it's in the daily practices of an organization, right? Who's who's doing the delegation? Do people feel that they can speak up and be heard? Um, can they bring their authentic selves to work? Or can they do those things that make them feel joy every day without a lot of pushback? And I think, and that's hard to achieve, right? It's it's difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I think it's the leadership center that says it's the quote unquote understood thing that is kind of, you know, beneath this, you know, beneath everybody, right? We all understand we're not allowed to talk to that guy, right? We're not allowed to say that thing in that room, then that breeds culture, right? And the, and I think it's hard to define, uh, but I do think there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it positively. I think there's a way that if it already exists and it's not good and it's toxic to change. Uh, and I think that's important to know. It doesn't have to stay the way it is. You can Bravo. always make changes and get to a better place. And I think we forget that. We're like, oh, it's just toxic here. What? make some change. If you're a leader, right? You know, I'm always on the leaders. If you're a leader in the room and you see that it's toxic, speak up, do some things, make, shake it up a little bit, because that's what's needed to make these cultures thrive and, and really do good for the people around you, right? Every day I talk about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you hit on it in like with a hammer that it is not about stuff. It's about the actual action and what's happening within not just the four walls, but what's happening around your center of leadership and your people. Like, how do they feel when they walk mm -hmm. in the door and how do they feel when they leave? 
So, Brian, I know you got stuff to say, so bring it on. <laughs> the way you led into that. Just, uh, but, hey, I, I'm going to take a page out of what Desiree just said. Uh, when it comes to, let's talk about what culture is not. So the first thing that, that I would like to say about it is that culture is not just what you say it is. So often we like to have mission statements and value statements and all of these beautiful things. Um, but it's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Um, and then secondly, it's not about what you do sometimes. So a lot of a lot of us, especially in organizations or with certain leaders, they like to say, well, I do this every once in a while or once a quarter, I check in with my team or every once in a while. Well, that's not actually your culture. That's just more of an anomaly. What do you do every day? You don't check in. You don't yeah. see how your people are doing. You're not communicating, right? We're not building alignment. Uh, so when we talk about culture, we have to talk about is that it's not always positive. We tend to think to think and talk about what we want culture to be as opposed to what it really is. I mean, it is what it is kind of person. Yeah. So when I'm going in to talk to a group or to talk to an organization, we have to establish where we are first. And that means sure. you have to deal with what do we actually do? What's our actual uh, mode of operation every day? And then that will decide how people view it, how people feel to your point, Chason, when they're coming to work, when they're leaving work, when they think about work, when they talk about work, all of that is a part of, of what your culture truly is. So we just have to deal with what it actually is first. Instead of trying to figure it out and change it immediately, you have to know what the pain points are. You have to know what the misconceptions or challenges are. What are our issues? What are we facing? And then you can start to re relook at what you're doing and then how can we adjust it but if you adjust it on the fly and you never really truly deal with and find out what the true bottom line problems are or issues are you're just spinning your wheels and just going to constantly be changing and it's not going to have any type of smooth pace that would make sense for people then it just becomes change for no reason right <laughs> so you know the first thing we have to do is listen and find out and learn from one another what the pain points are and then the second part is actually going back to the beginning we have to address what our initial vision is. If we don't have a true vision of what we want for our company, our organization, our team, whatever the case may be, then we can't build a culture because it's based on what your actual purpose and all of that is. So if we don't know what that is or if it's inconsistent, we have to go back, fix that, find out and make sure that our vision is sound. And then once we have a vision, we can strategize based on our vision to make sure that it serves the purpose of all of those that are involved. So the individual is taken care of, the collective group is taken care of, and the organization Perfect. is taken care of, which creates sustainability. That's awesome. That's awesome. Desiree, anything to add to that? Because Yeah, I mean, I think Brian hit it right on, but I always talk about this when I'm doing DEI work, right? There should be an audit of some at some point about what's happening, Absolutely. right? Like, what is happening? What are you trying to get to? But where are you at now? Audit your people in the same thing, in the same way for culture, right? Talk to your people. Send out surveys. I know everybody hates a survey, but <laughs> send out a survey. <laughs> Talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Get the feedback. Do, do stay interviews, right? We do stay interviews. In my life, I love right? that. Right? I absolutely not the answer. Not when yep. they're walking out the door and they have all exactly. the things to say. Yeah. What, why yeah. are they staying? Right. And then pick up on those pieces and figure out what's working, what's not, what people think the culture is. Right. And then define it because it really companies started in the beginning with one guy probably like in his basement, like, mm -hmm. hey, I want to do this thing. And here's what I want this mission to be in this culture. You constantly have to evaluate that. Right. From that point on, you go from 100 people to 500 people to 1000 starts to get messy. You have to start talking and auditing consistently or the, the culture starts to fall apart, right? Because people aren't oh, yes. hearing the same things at all levels. I talk about this in DEI. I'll talk about it here too. The work is hard and it's not easy. Um, and, that, and that's why it's worth it at the end of the day, right? Um, so give yourself some grace first, but also then I, I, we're going to keep going back to this. I think Brian and I are, is that if, if, you're, if you think you're listening, you're probably not really listening, mm -hmm. right? or you're not listening to the right people, right? So assess your strategy. Look at who you're listening to, what the feedback is, and say, okay, I've gotten the same thing from everybody. Maybe everybody's just telling me what I want to hear, 
right? So then look at the strategy, talk to different people, reassess what you, but I'm yes. going to tell you, listening is the biggest thing. I do not care what anybody says. I do not think people <laughs> practice active listening. Yes. Right? They think they're listening, but they're not. So for me, it's always go back. Well, I'm a super planner. I have OCD, but I would look at what I plan to do, right? Take it, shake it all up and be like, okay, that didn't work. Let me start over and really employ my active listening. The thing that we have to remember is to strategize collaboratively. Um, there's a lot of times where we get all this data and we, we go through our engagement surveys and our culture surveys and we collect it all, but then we go back into our ivory tower and then we get into a group together and then we make a strategy ourselves. Uh, and that never works out, right? That's the weird Wizard of Oz kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, no, we have to get to the point to where we all sit down in a room, all of those people that have uh, a voice that, that definitely will make a difference within the organization, right? And we all need to collaboratively deal with what can we do going forward. And that builds in agility. The thing that really hurts a lot of organizations is that even when they start a new strategy, trying to do the right thing, there's no flexibility in the new strategy. So if it doesn't go exactly to plan or things change or if people's ideas change, you have nowhere to go. There's no safety net because there is no flexibility. Um, so what I tell a lot of organizations and leaders to do is number one, stop. You're, you're trying to move so much and fix everything. The same thing we do personally as well, right? Sometimes it's not about trying to fix everything. Sometimes it's about stopping, assessing, and then getting the right people in a collaborative situation to where we can discuss how can we go forward with this? And then how can we prepare ourselves proactively for what could happen? Instead of thinking yeah. reactively, we have to think proactively and then decide, okay, we can build in some things. That's why DEI, when it's done correctly, works because it builds in proactivity and it lets you think ahead of what could happen. So you prepare yourself and put the right barriers in place to make sure that when you're bowling, you have the guy real so it never goes into the gutter. I love it when leaders tell me that, like, well, everything I got back was negative. So, you know, it, you know, I'm just going to trash it. That's, well, that's, what, that's no what just happened? <laughs> yeah, what just happened? <laughs> you, just, you just asked for all this feedback. Well, it's all negative. Right. So what am I to do with that? Well, that's the whole point. That if the, It is all negative. Then maybe we need to start from scratch, right? Maybe we're at a place, we're at a bad place. And and recognizing mm -hmm. that and having the flexibility and agility, like Brian said, to say, okay, well, this is not what we were expecting. Reverse engineer it and get right back out there is so key. Um, right on. And I I'm, love it. And I'm glad you brought that up, actually, Desiree, as far as the negative feedback, uh, because the thing that a lot of organizations and leaders in C-suite miss is that when they get a lot of negative feedback, they see that as, oh my God, this is an emergency 911. Right. And what I tell them is actually the opposite. If they are willing to speak up and to say, this is what's going on, and even if it's negative, yeah. that's already a win in your book because they're willing right. to they feel care. comfortable enough to speak up and they care, exactly. Right. So they let you know you have something to work with. So instead of being afraid of the negativity right. or, or feeling like that it's personal, we have to tell people all of the time, especially leaders, when you get feedback, do not take it personally. It's just data. Right. You use that data that you get and then we adjust because that's what makes you a leader and why you're great at what you do is because you should be able to use what you're given and then we have to be able to strategize based on that and plan based on that. So don't be afraid of negativity. Embrace it because if right. you get it, you know where you need to go. All right. I think it's the best thing that could happen to an organization to me. Like, it give is. me all the negative, because if everybody's pot is positive, that scares me. So thank you for joining us for Time to Change. With Brian Poindexter, Desiree Goldie, we are out, folks.